Placed Bentley Greens travelled to Summer Street on Thursday night to take on Melbourne Knights in what will be the league leader's sternest test of the season so far. The Knights came into the contest three points clear of Bentley with a game in hand, while a win for the visitors would put both clubs on equal points at the top of the table. To team news, and the home side were buoyed by the return of marquee player Andrew Butashich, who was rested during last week's 2-1 defeat of Werribee City. That was the only change head coach Andrew Marth made to his side, with Anthony Colosimo dropping to the bench, where he was joined by his brother Jacob, who has looked to have recovered from his season-ending knee injury. For Bentley Greens, head coach John Anastasiadis made two changes to his squad that drew one all with Green Gully last Friday night. Former Melbourne Knights player Daniel Vishevich was promoted to the starting 11, as was Thomas Matthews, with Dion Kirk and Jamie Diabru relegated to the bench. It was the away side that got things underway from the kickoff, starting what was a tight opening period. The Knights looked dangerous early in the half, with a series of headers and strikes just failing to connect following a corner kick. With the stakes high for the top of the table clash, the game saw some strong challenges, including a seventh minute tackle from Adrian Zara, which earned him a yellow card early on. Eleven minutes in, and Bentley created the match's first strike on target, however it didn't have enough power behind it to trouble Chris May. The Knights returned fire after a quarter of an hour played when a day of free kick ended up making its way to Andrew Butashich, who forced the save from Alistair Bray with a shot on the turn inside the box. Not long later, and the Knights were almost gifted a goal when Butashich capitalised on a casual clearance from Bray. That was all forgotten just before the half hour, when a fine Tyson home strike broke the deadlock. That was Holmes' first goal of the season, and his first goal for John Anastasiadis' men after joining the club from South Melbourne in the off-season. Shortly after the goal, and the referee put another Knights player into his notebook, this time Ben Suri, for an off-the-ball incident in the middle of the park. Bentley continued to look dangerous after taking the lead, but the 33rd minute effort through captain Wayne Wallace failed to test Chris May. Up the other end, and the Knights enjoyed what was then their best chance of the match, when a low cross from Stipo Andriashevich was just headed over by Bentley's Steven Topalovic. In the dying embers of the first half, James McGarry joined Zara and Suri in the referee's notebook when his challenger Troy Ruthven was deemed dangerous despite winning the ball. That was the last major moment from the opening half, with the Greens holding a slender lead heading into the break. Seconds out from the interval, and Bentley went close to doubling their advantage when they latched onto a poor night's pass before setting up Chris Lucas 
who sprayed his shot over the bar. In the 50th minute, Chris May was called upon for the first serious time when he denied the league's leading goalscorer, Matt Thurtell, with a point-blank save. The game seemed to open up following that save, with Knights going up the other end within the minute and forcing Bray to come off his line to smother the ball off Alex Deo after some neat touches from Zara and Barisic. The Knights had another chance on target five minutes later when a half volley from McGarry was put straight at the Bentley custodian. On the 57th minute mark, Chris May was forced to deal with Thurtell again when the forward broke through the Knights' defence. However, the Knights' keeper kept him out for a second time to the agony of the away support. Those saves were in vain, with the FFA Cup semi-finalists snatching their second goal of the evening when a good floated ball from Wayne Wallace picked out Tyson Holmes at the back post for his brace. Less than two minutes after scoring the second, and the away side put the result beyond doubt with their third goal of the night after a quick counter-attack set up Chris Lucas. Some Knights defenders believed the Greens winger was offside in the lead-up, but there was no denying the 23-year-old's pace, which helped him evade Milan Batul before toke-poking an effort past Chris May. The two quick goals saw Andrew Muth alter the formation with defender Adrian Del Monaco going off for midfielder Anthony Colosmo. But it was Bentley who continued to trouble the Knights defenders, with Thurtell being played through to goal only for May to keep him out for the third time. On the 65th minute mark, Marth made his second change of the night with the formerly injured Ivan Gurgic replacing Alex Deo. The Knights continued to press deep in the second half despite being three goals down, with McGarry testing his luck from range to no avail. McGarry's teammate Andrew Butashic went closer just over five minutes later when his strike from the edge of the box trickled inches wide of the left post. With 10 minutes remaining, the Knights made their third and final change when Ben Suri was replaced by striker Jacob Colosimo. With the result all but confirmed, Marth's men continued to look for a consolation goal, with McGarry's free kick in the 83rd minute going close. From the subsequent corner, Adrian Zara put a volley agonisingly over the bar. side continued to pepper Bentley's goal and 18-yard box with crosses and half chances in the final minute of regular time until an Andrew Butashic skewed effort from the edge of the area put the ball out for a goal kick. Butashic did have one last involvement in the game, 
when his audacious effort in the 92nd minute went wide after he noticed Alistair Bray had strayed from his line. But the Knights weren't able to reduce the deficit despite the late surge, with the club suffering their first loss of the season, meaning Bentley now hold top spot on goal difference. The squad have a quick turnaround and an opportunity to retake the top spot when they face Oakley Cannons in their next game this Tuesday at Knights Stadium. Speaking to Knights TV after the game, defender Ivan Gurgic said he took positives out of the performance. Uh, well, Gurg's a disappointing three in a loss uh, today. What was your assessment of the, um, of the performance? Oh, I thought we battled well. We, we were in the game. Uh, just a few uh, defensive mistakes cost us. I, don't, I think uh, just lack of concentration or just losing a man. But I think we didn't perform too badly. Um, we, we were in the game. Even when we went 3 0 down, we we're still looking to score. And we still had that intent, which was good. We didn't drop our heads. Um, what do you think of Bentley? Obviously, a lot of uh, spoken about them um, in the off season. They've recruited well. Um, how do you see them as being maybe title contenders? Oh, they've they've got a um, good squad, deep squad. That always helps. Um, oh, look, they've beat us today, but we'll learn from that. Um, they're looking as one of the top teams in the comp, so we'll learn what we can from today's performance and uh, reassess for next time we meet them. Try and get the better of them next time. On a personal level, obviously you've come back today um, after injury. Um, you've been on the bench and that sort of thing. You've played some minutes in the under-20s, but how are you and your recovery from your, your, from your knee injury? Yeah, I'm feeling good. I was looking set for the start of the season and then uh, I was unfortunate to be on the end of a bad tackle in the South Melbourne game and I got delayed probably another month. So it was very frustrating, especially working so hard to get back from my previous injury. So... Um, now, it was a bit of frustrating, but um, being back into it, it's good. Being in the squad, it's good, so um, hopefully I can try and break into the team. It's hard that we've been winning, but um, hopefully I can just show Stab and Frank that I deserve a first-team spot. Um, obviously, it's a quick turnaround for us. Um, Tuesday, we've got Oakley Cannons, um, a side that hasn't even scored a goal, let alone won one. Yeah. Um, is that something that's a bit dangerous to look at? You, you know, they're out there to prove themselves now. Uh, well, you can't, really, you can't really look at that on face value much because... A lot of teams in this league can pull upsets. For instance, North Geelong, they lost their first two games. They won 6-1 against Gully and no one really expected that. So Oakley will be firing and we can't take them lightly at all. It'll be a tough match.